بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هذا شيخ حسن قاسم الريمي حفظه الله in this short summarized uh, and reminder he began with the خطبة الحاجة the speech of the need and after which he uh, began his discussion uh, which was to do with the hadith of in Sahih Muslim the hadith of Tamim al Dari radiallahu ta'ala anhu where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the religion is sincere advice and it's sincere advice to Allah towards his book, his messengers, the rulers and to the laymen and this subject the shaykh begins after mentioning this hadith a statement uh, uh, from Imam Al-Khattabi rahimahullah where he said that the intent of nasiha, advice, sincere advice is wishing good or well-being for the one who's being advised and the shaykh he says also it is from the rights of a Muslim it's from the rights of a Muslim as it comes in one hadith in Sahih and Muslim from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the six rights that a Muslim held, has over another Muslim and one of them is that if he asks for advice that you advise him and the Shaykh says giving advice and guidelines is something from the religion and from advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the Quran is to have taqwa of Allah and then the Shaykh he mentions the ayah in Surah An-Nisa where Allah he says what means that he has advised, advised those before us as well as us that we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise, Allah says in the Quran, O you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be with those who are truthful. Those who are truthful and upright. And this is in Surah At-Tawbah. So he mentions here that giving sincere advice uh, is from something that's in Islam and it is something that's part of the religion. And he mentions also some lines of poetry encouraging the importance of advising with taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that taqwa someone will achieve through it happiness and good in the hereafter. And then he mentions a narration reported from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu which he describes the taqwa and he mentions amongst the taqwa is that you have the fear of a jaleel. That you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al jalil and the Shaykh says although this narration is well known from Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu the name al jalil here is not established uh, but then he mentions that what it means taqwa is acting is acting upon the commandments of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he makes dua for all of the listeners that we are, we are amongst, where Allah makes us amongst those who have taqwa. And then he mentions in the next part here uh, that also from advice is that the person he advises uh, those uh, who, uh, I'm sorry, he also gives us the advice to Shaykh that we should have uh, concern and encouragement to seek Islamic knowledge and understand the religion. So Shaykh gives us the advice to understand and seek knowledge of the religion. And to establish this, he brings the hadith of Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when Allah wants some good for someone, he gives him understanding of the religion. The hadith is agreed upon. And he also brings the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions whoever treads a path seeking Islamic knowledge, or religious knowledge, Allah will make easy his path to paradise. So the encouragement for us is that we seek beneficial knowledge and that we busy with it because the one who seeks knowledge is given life. And the Shaykh he brings the eye in Surah Al An'am where Allah he says is the example of the one who was dead. The example of one who was dead and then and in darkness and then given life. And the Shaykh says here the darkness to the light intended here, the light is the knowledge. So the example of the believer then is like rain, anywhere he or she falls, they, he or she benefits. And the Shaykh then mentions some lines of poetry to show this. The example of the believer being that of rain, beneficial rain, wherever he or she falls, they benefit others. And then he gives us advice as well to hold on to uh, 
the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says the sunnah, it includes the statements of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his actions, his mannerisms, his physical characteristics, their approvals, etc. And the person should hold fast to it. And he brings some narrations to prove this. And the Shaykh, he mentions uh, some of those examples. Like Allah says in the Quran, that uh, whatever the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brings to you, follow it. And whatever he prohibits you, avoid it. And he brings the verse in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, say if you verily say if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. And then he brings uh, the hadith uh, where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentions the example of his Ummah where he says that all of my Ummah will enter paradise except for he who or she who uh, rejects. And until the end of the hadith where he mentions whoever obeys me well, has uh, well, unto paradise from whom disobeys me, has refused. And he brings after that the hadith of Irbad bin Sariya, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, alaykum bi sunnati, upon you used to hold fast to my sunnah, and until the end of the hadith, and he says in the many other texts, they encourage us to hold on to the sunnah, such that some of the salaf, they said, that the sunnah, the example of sunnah, kasafina to nuh, is like the example of, the Ark of Noah, the Ark of Nuh. And he encourages us to hold on to the Sunnah. Another hadith to prove this is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, left behind with you two things. If you hold fast to them, you will never become misguided. The Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's authentic hadith. And he says here also that we hold fast uh, to the Sunnah and its rulings. And also he mentions to us, the honorable listeners and the brothers, that he advises us to be given a siha between one another, or advise one another. If we see one of our, our, of, of our brothers who is falling into mistake or error, that we advise him. And he brings again the hadith of Abu Hurairah and Sahih Muslim, that the right of another Muslim upon a Muslim is six. And amongst them, if he asks for advice, he, he, he counsels him, he gives him that advice. And also from the hadith earlier, the hadith of Tamim, is the advice to the ruler. And he mentions that it means when we say that we have sincerity and sincere advice to the ruler, it means that you aid him, the ruler, upon good, and you obey him, and you treat him kind with kindness, and you don't go against them. And then he mentions that in this chapter, we should follow the way of the Salaf of Salih, and that that means uh, holding to the community and the jama'ah and obeying the ruler. And he brings a narration from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he mentions that what people, what you, means the people find disliking in, in regards to the jama'ah, in regards to holding fast to the congregation, is better for you than what you might find of goodness in differing. means this, despite the differ, the, diff, the, some of the difficulties that will be found in holding fast to the jama'ah, it is better than that what people perceive to be good in, in splitting. And he mentions, unlike, uh, and this is different than those groups of the Khawarij who have deviated and who have taken a different way in this chapter. And he mentions some of the examples, whether it be ISIS or Al Qaeda, and like this. And these people, he says, who think they are upon goodness, but they are not. And they are right away from uh, what this guidance of the Salaf were upon. And the Shaykh mentions at the end that we should have eagerness in. Uh, this chapter of holding fast to the jama'ah and, and having sincere advice to the ruler. And he asks uh, and makes dua that we hold fast to taqwa and righteousness. And then he ends the speech with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we end with this transition.